Hello there, I'm Noel Hasagaba, Deputy Executive Director at the Port of Long Beach. Welcome to Supply Chain Insight, where we explore the latest trends, issues, and news in the supply chain with top industry leaders, experts, and influencers. Our objective is to bring you the insight you need to help you keep your cargo moving. Now, today's business executives expect a lot from their supply chains. Efficiency, velocity, reliability, flexibility, and cost management. Supply Chain Insight brings the supply chain to you one segment at a time to explore new approaches and innovative solutions that will help you and the Port of Long Beach deliver greater value to our customers and partners. Today's episode highlights a program that some shippers have used with great success to support their supply chain operations. And although it's not a new tool, it's one that more shippers could take advantage of, and that is why we're bringing this to you now, so that you can learn about it and determine if it makes sense for your business. The program I'm referring to is known as FTZ, which is short for Foreign Trade Zones. And here at the Port of Long Beach, our Foreign Trade Zone is number 50, because we were the 50th grantee in the nation when it was established. Now get this, back on September 14th, 1979. Since 1970, there have been more than 300 foreign trade zones established, encompassing over 3,200 firms and supporting over 500,000 jobs. More than $700 billion in goods shipped through FTCs annually nationwide. Now, FTC operations are wide-ranging, covering storage, exhibition, manufacture, export, assembly, and e-commerce. And products include everything from automobiles, herbal supplements, consumer electronics to trade products, and more. So what exactly is an FTZ? Well, foreign trade zones are secure areas under U.S. Customs and Border Protection supervision that are generally considered outside CBP territory upon activation. They're located in or near ports of entry and are the U.S. version of what are known internationally as free trade zones. FTZs are intended to encourage trade and stimulate economic growth and development. In fact, FTZ number 50, administered by the Port of Long Beach, supports nearly 5,000 jobs annually, generated by 33 different FTZ operators. And today, I am pleased to have one of our FTZ operators with us. But before we get into our discussion with our guests, let me tell you a little bit more about FTZs. They provide many advantages. From a cash flow state, uh, standpoint, there's duty deferral, and there is also the possibility of duty reduction, duty elimination, and tax exemptions. Other benefits include greater flexibility, ease of paperwork, no bond requirement, fine avoidance, blanket permits, and indefinite storage, which results in weekly entry savings. So to tell us more about how one company is using our FTZ program with great success, our special guest today is Jennifer Mancinelli. As a senior manager for foreign trade zones at Puma Group, Jennifer oversees the operation and compliance of their FTZ program. Jennifer has been with Puma for 10 years and has been instrumental in the launch and growth of their FTZs. Prior to working in the apparel and footwear industry, she was an import-export manager for a frozen seafood company for 15 years. She holds a BA degree from Emory University where she was a member of the Phi Beta Kappa National Honor Society. It's always great to have a fellow Phi Beta Kappa on the show. Jennifer, welcome to Supply Chain Insight. Hello, Noel, and thanks so much for having me here today. Now, for those who may not be familiar with Puma Group, Tell us about your company and give us a brief profile of your business operation. Sure. So Puma is one of the world's leading sports brands. We're a German-based athletic footwear and active wear company with headquarters in Herzegowitz, Germany. And we've got offices um, all around the globe. We design and market a wide range of footwear, apparel, and accessories. Uh, last year, we opened a brand new North American headquarters in Somerville, Massachusetts. Puma prides itself on our forever faster mentality and puts a lot of focus on innovation and creativity. Puma is rooted in our brand values of being brave, confident, determined, and joyful in everything that we do. That's terrific, Jennifer. I, I love the values that you just described there. So Puma has been, uh, uh, you've been taking advantage of the foreign trade zone for some time, thanks to your uh, leadership and stewardship. Uh, tell us about your foreign trade zone operation. Yes, so we've been operating a foreign trade zone uh, for just over 10 years now. As you mentioned in your uh, intro, a foreign trade zone is a designated geographical area where merchandise is treated essentially as if it is outside of U.S. Customs territory. However, all federal, state, and local laws still apply. 
So normal import procedure is when your goods arrive at the port in the United States that you would make arrangements for clearance with U.S. Customs in order to be able to pick up your goods from port. So generally, the importer would provide the commercial shipping documentation to their broker so the broker can make entry with customs and gain release of the goods. And this clearance process requires payment of duty at the time. With an FTZ, what we are able to do is move our import cargo from the port directly to our FTZ warehouse without payment of duty. We pay the duty when the goods ship out of the zone for U.S. consumption. So what's different is that at the time of arrival, or typically it's a few days prior to vessel ETA, there's a process by which we request permission from U.S. Customs to move those shipments directly from the port to our FTZ. Since duty has not been paid on the goods, they are referred to as foreign status goods, and they must move by bonded carrier. We file a 214 admission after the shipment arrives at the zone and is received into inventory, which lets customs know that we've received those goods. In FTZ terminology, goods are said to be admitted to the zone. So goods that are customs cleared and on which duty has been paid are referred to as domestic status goods. We are able to bring both foreign and domestic status goods into the FTZ. And there are actually uh, also two different types of foreign status goods. There are privileged foreign and non-privileged foreign. Uh, primary difference here is that in the case of privileged status, the duty rate is locked at time of entry, in uh, admission rather, and in the case of non-privileged, the duty rate on the goods will be that rate in effect at the time of exit from the zone. So Jennifer, it sounds like based on your description there that it really streamlines the conveyance process from a time a container arrives at port and, and leaves a port, which is exactly what shippers need, right? You, you need velocity, reliability, predictability. And I imagine that the pandemic and the supply chain crisis that ensued uh, impacted that process, right? Tell us about how the pandemic affected your FTZ operation. Yes, uh, like everyone, we, we experienced the stress on individuals and families who were personally affected by the virus itself, as well as the quarantines, which took us away from the typical nine to five office workday schedule. Uh, from the spring of 2020 through much of 2021, uh, logistics vendors and CPB personnel were neither permitted to visit customers or, or receive them into our facilities. Uh, thankfully, we were all able to adapt uh, quickly to the requirements necessary to keep everyone safe and navigate the challenges of this uh, new environment that we all found ourselves in. We were ext extremely proud to actually launch a new FTZ instance in 2020 during the pandemic. Uh, the new FTZ is in the middle of the country, in the Midwest. Uh, a lot of preparation work goes into setting up and securing approval to operate a foreign trade zone. From the application to the FTZ board in Washington, D.C., to working with the local grantee and U.S. Customs in the region of the FTZ facility, um, business mu businesses must demonstrate in their applications, as well as in their other communications, that they have the capability to run a compliant, well-functioning FTZ from the perspective of both precise inventory control and requisite security measures. So going live with the new DC in June of 2020 was a notable accomplishment, especially given that uh, US Customs themselves were on lockdown and not permitted to travel or meet with businesses in the import community. Uh, definitely a notable accomplishment and congratulations to you and Puma for doing that right in the middle of a pandemic, as you said. So that begs the question, right? Even in the middle of a global supply chain, the likes of which we have never seen before, Puma went ahead and you move forward and you continue to expand your FTZ operations. So clearly uh, that tells me that there are benefits, right? Uh, tell, us, tell us more about the benefits and why Puma continued down this path even during the pandemic and at the same time what are some of the challenges um, in using an FTZ that you think uh, shippers uh, should consider? Sure you're absolutely right there's a number of economic benefits to operating an FTZ and that's exactly uh, why we do it. Uh, let's look at some of the benefits first. 
So we have cash flow impact. Instead of paying duty to customs at the time of shipment arrival at port, we don't pay the duty until the product ships out of the zone. So it logically follows that we can do something else with those funds in the meantime. Uh, we have merchandise processing fee savings, uh, also uh, shortened as uh, MPF. Uh, so U.S. Customs assesses a merchandise processing fee for most imports into the U.S., which is calculated at a rate of 0.3464% of the value of the goods. It currently maxes out at $538.40 an entry. We file one 7501 entry per week for everything that shipped out of the zone in the previous zone week. So therefore, we only pay the merchandise processing fee once per week, as opposed to paying that MPF on each addition, individual customs entry, which is the case when shipments are being customs cleared at the time of arrival at the port. So the savings here really adds up fast when you are importing a lot of shipments. Exports are another area where we uh, save a lot of money. We don't have to pay duty on products that are exported from the zone as long as we export under customs guidelines and file the appropriate form 7512. Similarly with scrap, we don't have to pay duty on scrap items that are destroyed as long as the de destruction is done under customs guidelines, supervision, and that we file the appropriate form 216. We have brokerage fee savings. Uh, we're not paying broker fees for entry filing on shipments that are being admitted to the zone. We file the 214 admission forms ourselves using the FTZ software, which has a direct link to uh, custom system. There is also inverted tariff duty savings for uh, manufacturing zones. So uh, there is a situation where if a finished product has a lower duty rate, than the rates of the parts that were imported to produce it, you can enter it for U.S. consumption at the finished product rate. Yeah. And there's also no limit to how long goods can remain in an FTC. Yeah. Um, some challenges, FTCs are considered to be outside of U.S. Customs territory, but they are under the supervision of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. The port director has the responsibility of overseeing FTZ activity that occurs within their port. So customs has the right to visit the FTZ site and conduct spot checks, and they do that on a regular basis. So it's essential to maintain strict compliance with U.S. customs regulations. And there's a couple of parts of the uh, Code of Federal Regulations which speak specifically to FTZ and in bond requirements. So. We're extremely focused on compliance uh, all of the time. There's a number of reports that we have to file accurately and in a timely manner. So we have to be mindful of this and really on top of our, our game with that all of the time. Um, also strict inventory control is important, which I think can be viewed as both a challenge right. and a benefit. Essentially every single unit must be properly tracked and accounted for within the FTZ environment. There also must be sufficient security to ensure that goods are secure and there cannot be any unauthorized access. So this means uh, things like fences, cameras, gates, door alarms, guards, strict visitor control procedures. As part of the application process, you have to submit a map and a security survey. So it's not something to be undertaken lightly. It is a bit of a process to set up an FTZ. However, nothing is inherently difficult either. So it's just important that people understand it. it won't happen overnight, but definitely uh, something that's worth doing. Uh, the application process involves working with a local FTZ sponsor referred to as a grantee, the Foreign Trade Zones Board and US Customs. First necessary to obtain a site designation from the FTZ board, and then the site has to be activated by US Customs. The FTZ applicant must demonstrate to custom satisfaction that the site's secure and that they will maintain strict control over their inventory and be in, in compliance with all customs regulations. Well, Jennifer, thank you for outlining some of the benefits and challenges. And again, I, I can see just in the process improvements and the efficiencies in, in the streamlined process, not just the cost savings, but the time savings as well. And I would agree with you that strict inventory control is something we could all benefit from today. So you are in the apparel and footwear industry, 
But what type of importers do you think would benefit from using FTZs? If you could tell us briefly. So there are many different types of importers mm -hmm. who could potentially benefit from using an FTZ. We operate a distribution zone, which means that we move goods to the warehouse and then ship them out to customers. So mm -hmm. we're only manipulating the goods in very basic ways, such as counting, stacking, or labeling. Uh, another type of FTZ is a manufacturing zone where components are brought in and a finished product is, is created. Uh, and as mentioned, we were discussing uh, earlier zone, when we were talking about ways that zones can save money, uh, manufacturing zones can benefit from inverted duty savings. But in order to decide whether an importer would benefit from operating an FTZ, they should first conduct a thorough analysis on their supply chain. Where do they source goods from? What are the countries of origin? What are the duty rates of these? What's the volume? How are they purchasing these? What are the INCO terms? Do they export a lot? Do they scrap a lot? So how much potential savings depends on each individual importer's unique situation? Fantastic, Jennifer, thank you for that. And you know, a lot of people are surprised that here at the Port of Long Beach every year, we serve 200,000 different shippers. And yet, so far, only about 33 are taking advantage of this FTZ program. And again, this is why we're bringing this to you. We want to make sure our shipper community is aware of this program and all the advantages that uh, come with it. So to wrap up our very interesting and fascinating conversation, Jennifer, what is your outlook for the future of FTZs and for Puma for that matter? So we say, hey, the sky's the limit. We absolutely love our FTZ program. It's been a very beneficial cost saving tool for us and we're expanding our FTZ operations. We are currently, as I mentioned, operating another FTZ in the middle of the country, which we opened in 2020. And we're in the process of building another DC that will also be an FTZ in Arizona that's slated to open in 2024. So it's been a wonderful program for us. That's terrific, Jennifer. Well, uh, this goes without saying, but we're very happy to have Puma as one of our FTZ operators here in FTZ number 50. Jennifer, thanks again for joining us today to share your experience and insight as an FTZ operator. And to our valued audience, if you'd like to learn more about our F FTZ program, you can contact our FTZ administrator, Michelle Smothers, at FTZ50 at POLB.com. That's FTZ50 at POLB.com. And thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you again soon for another episode of Supply Chain Insight brought to you by the Port of Choice, the Port of Long Beach. <music>